Hello everyone and welcome back. In our last video, we have looked at different methods of topicalizing the AOA in preparation for fiber optic intubation. In this video, we'll go through the regional blocks that are used for numbing the AOA. The same diagrams here illustrates the sensory innovations of the AOA. We have discussed it in the first video. In nutshell, we have three important nerves, trigeminal, glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves. The nose and nasopharynx is supplied by trigeminal nerve, the oropharynx by glossopharyngeal nerve, and the larynx and trachea by vagus nerve through its superior laryngeal and recurrent laryngeal branches. There is however some overlap in these areas of supply so the boundaries are not clear cut but this gives a good overall picture of the airway sensation. For anesthetizing nasal passage, topical anesthesia using sprays, nebulized anesthetics or cotton swabs soaked in local anesthetics are effective. For oropharynx and larynx supplied by glossopharyngeal, superior laryngeal and recurrent laryngeal nerves, topical techniques work well too but we have the option of nerve blocks. These nerve blocks provide deep level of anesthesia but pose risks of injury to the nerve itself and adjacent tissues. They are also technically more challenging than topical methods. Uh, let's begin with glossopharyngeal nerve block. The glossopharyngeal nerve provides sensation to the posterior third of the tongue and the vallecula and also provides the sensory limb for the gag reflex. Therefore, this nerve block is particularly useful in abolishing the gag reflex. There are two approaches described for this block, intraoral and peristylate approach. For the intraoral approach, the patient needs adequate mouth opening so that the posterior tonsillar pillars or palatopharyngeal arch is easily visible. The oropharynx also needs to be topicalized with lidocaine spray before attempting the injection. Then using the tongue depressor to expose the posterior tonsillar pillar, we inject about 2 to 5 ml of 2% lidocaine submucosally at the caudal aspect of posterior tonsillar pillars, approximately at about 0.5 cm lateral to the base of the tongue. The needle is then advanced only about quarter to half centimeters depth. We can use a 22 or 25 gauge needles and it is important to expirate before the injection. We then repeat it on the other side. Alternatively, a lidocaine soaked course may be applied firmly to the area for several minutes. This method reduces the risk of intravascular injection but it is less reliable than direct infiltration. In periastylate approach, which is an external approach, we inject local anesthetics just behind the stylate process. This is the area where the glossopharyngeal nerve runs. The internal carotid artery lies very close here, so careful technique and aspiration are essential. Moving on, the superior laryngeal nerve, a branch of vagus nerve, provides sensation to the laryngeal structures above the vocal cords and lies inferior to the greater cornu of the hyoid bone. Here it splits into internal and external branches. The internal branch then penetrates the thyrohyoid membrane continuing submucosally in the piriform recess. The external branch does not penetrate the thyrohyoid membrane. It descends on the larynx deep to the sternothyroid muscle. The superior laryngeal nerve can be blocked using the external or the internal approach. To perform the block using the external approach, the patient is placed in supine position with some degree of neck extension to facilitate the identification of the hyoid bone. Once identified, the hyoid bone is gently displaced to the site where the block is to be performed and a 25 gauge needle is inserted from the lateral side of the neck aiming towards the greater cornu. Upon the needle contact has been made with the greater cornu of the hyoid bone, the needle is walked off the bone inferiorly where 2 ml of 2% lidocaine is injected. This single injection will block both the internal and the external branches of superior laryngeal nerve. If the needle is advanced any further, 
it can pierce the thyrohyroid membrane and injecting local anesthetic here will result in only the internal branch of the superior laryngeal nerve being blocked as with all blocks careful aspiration must be performed prior to the injection especially as the carotid artery is in close proximity the internal approach uses causs or plaquettes soaked in local anesthetics and placed in piriform fossa using forceps These causs or plaquettes need to be kept in place for 5 to 10 minutes to allow sufficient time for the local anesthetics to take effect. Sometimes it can be difficult to identify the landmarks for example in obese patient when trying to perform this block. Ultrasound can therefore be used to facilitate the deposition of local anesthetics to the correct place. For this the patient lies supine with the neck slightly extended and a high frequency linear probe is placed across the neck at the level of hyoid bone. The hyoid bone appears as a bright curved line with a shadow underneath. The probe is then positioned in a parasagittal orientation just lateral to the midline. In this view the structure visible from anterior to posterior are the omohyoid muscle, sternohyoid muscle thyroid muscle and then the thyrohyoid membrane deeper to that is the preepiglottic space the superior laryngeal artery may sometimes be seen here as well but it is small and not always visible after identifying these landmarks a needle is inserted out of plane from anterior to posterior until we reach the plane just above the thyrohyoid membrane Hydro dissection helps confirm the correct space. 1 to 2 ml of local anesthetic is injected into this space called the superior laryngeal space. This space lies between the hyoid bone above and the thyroid cartilage below and is bounded anteriorly by the thyrohyoid muscle and posteriorly by the thyrohyoid membrane and preepiglottic space. The sensory innervation of vocal cords and trachea is supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve also a branch of vagus nerve. Direct recurrent laryngeal nerve blocks are not performed as they can result in bilateral vocal cord paralysis and airway obstruction as both motor and sensory fibers run together. Therefore this nerve is blocked using translaryngeal block. For this block the main objective is to identify the cricothyroid membrane and to do this the patient is placed supine with the neck slightly extended so that the landmarks become more prominent the neck is then palpated carefully until the cricoid cartilage is felt and just above this structure lying below the thyroid cartilage is the cricothyroid membrane which serves as the target point The trachea is then stabilized between the thumb and the third finger of one hand while a 20 or 22 gauge needle attached to a syringe is advanced perpendicularly through the skin toward the membrane with continuous aspiration and the sudden appearance of bubble confirms that the needle tip has entered the trachea at this stage 5 ml of 4% lidocaine is rapidly injected before the needle is withdrawn and the resulting cough helps to disperse the anesthetic widely thereby producing an effective recurrent laryngeal nerve block for ultrasound guided translaryngeal block the probe is first placed in the midline of the neck in longitudinal orientation where the tracheal rings appear clearly on the screen as the probe is moved cranially the cricoid cartilage comes into view appearing slightly larger and lying more superficially compared to the tracheal rings and with further upward movement of the probe the thyroid cartilage is seen the cricothyroid membrane is the structure that lies between the thyroid cartilage above and the cricoid cartilage below and this is the target for our block Once the cricothyroid membrane has been identified the block is performed under real time ultrasound guidance by gently tilting the probe from the midline into a parasagittal position while ensuring that the cricoid cartilage remains visible as a key landmark the needle is introduced just cranial to the cricoid cartilage 
and its path can be observed on ultrasound monitor. As soon as the air is aspirated, confirming entry into the trachea, the, long, the local anesthetic is injected to complete the block. That's all for this video. In our next video, we'll look about how we give sedation for fiber optic intubation.